Hello again, friends. Ed Harold here with you today, your fearless leader. Welcome to another Life with Breath expert series. Today I have a dear friend of mine who is a world-class person, a world-class athlete, and I can't wait to share some of his wisdom and knowledge and successes that he's had with life with you today. Welcome back, friends. Super excited to be with you for this week's edition of Life with Breath Expert Series. Before we introduce our super guest and we get dialed in to the benefits of nasal breathing, let's just get ourselves centered and see if we can drop into our body and listen to the whispers of our heart. So in your own way, planting your feet firmly down onto the earth and feeling the strength in your legs, and engage these legs as if you're going to stand up, but don't. And notice your spine will become completely erect. Now relax your eyes and jaw and let go of any old tension or any old memories around the face that causes the muscles of the face to contract. Pull your awareness to your nostrils. And begin to sense the flow of breath coming in and out of your nostrils, giving you this opportunity in this moment. And what do you want to do with this moment? Now begin to breathe as slowly as you can. Drop your shoulders away from your ears. Relax your hands and feet. And as you begin to breathe slower, notice the chatter of the mind begins to dissipate. And bring yourself into the opening layers of mental focus, mental attention. For those of you who know the ocean sounding breath, allow a soft sound to form in the throat and allow that to anchor your mind in the present moment. Begin to breathe as slowly as you can with this ocean sound and nurture the belly, your heart and lungs and the various centers of your brain so that they're all working together. We're all going in the same direction. And see if there's little spaces where you can bring breath into your body where you couldn't moments ago. And begin to open these areas up where energy might have been blocked. Slow motion inhale. Slow motion exhale. For those of you that want to go a little bit deeper, when the inhale is complete, Hold the breath in several seconds and allow the mind to become still and silent. Allow the exhale to be rich and full and complete. And then hold the breath out several seconds. And again, alert the mind that stillness and silence are the key to learning new skills. Couple more rounds, slow motion inhale, hold for two. Slow motion, exhale, hold for two. Allow the breath to do all the work for you. And you just sit back in your mind and feel this most powerful tool of self-care. See if you can breathe a little bit slower. And practice this, this slower breathing. It's like an anaerobic workout of strengthening the muscles of inhale and exhale. And when you're holding the breath in, notice you have the ability to choose what you want to occur at any given moment of your life. It doesn't choose you. You choose it. Yes, we are choosing what we want to occur in life. Let's do one more round. And if you're in the middle of a round, that's fine. Do another. There's, there's no time constraints here. We took the scoreboard down. It's going to be a powerful hour.
And then to come out of this, on your next exhale, let it come out through the mouth slowly with a sigh. Just break that sound barrier and just relax into the space you've created. Ah, oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one of the all-time greats here today. We have the legendary A.J. Holland, who, in my world, is one of my heroes. Welcome, A.J. Eddie, how we doing, man? It's an honor. It's an honor to be uh, chat with you, man. Good to see you, too. I feel like I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, you know, I miss your vibe. I miss those little coffees we'd get up on... Uh, Ventnor Avenue there at Cookie's Place. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of great conversations and, you know, just different philosophies and asking yeah. questions about life and, you know, just kind of running things through both of our awarenesses, you know, it helped both of us. Yeah, I feel like it was, um, what was it, maybe three, four, maybe three summers ago when we were doing all those one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions right in your uh, living room. <laughs> <laughs> And then afterwards, well, but you know, between Harley, uh, you know, jumping on you or I, you know, um, and then going down to the beach and yeah, having our little uh, life talks, man. Um, good times. Yeah. You know, sometimes guys have have difficulty in, in putting a voice to some of the deeper things that obviously motivate us or create insecurities or questions about our skill sets and. You know, we didn't seem to have any problem at all bringing up kind of the deepest of the deep and trying to find the best in it for each of us. No, no, no. And I think it's, um, I think it's just a matter of, uh, you know, being honest with yourself more than anything. You know, I think that's like a big barrier, especially dudes, you know, like they tend to um, grasp the whole like macho, like, you know, not grounded to like um, earth, but also not grounded to like your own awareness to like, you know, certain things that are going on in life, you know, certain obstacles that you need to uh, face, you know, head on. But um, yeah, I just, I just recall, man, I always bring it up to people, you know, like whenever anybody's always asking like, oh, where'd you hear about the whole nasal breathing? And, you know, like, where do you get your particular mindset or view on things? And it's, I don't know, a lot of it brings back to uh, not only our talks, but, um, um, but also, you know, like my introduction to the, uh, the nasal breathing when, when you and I, um, first really started working on it, I guess it was, you know, over 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's take a few steps back a little further before you started Doc Fitness and you're helping so many people, you know, nationally and internationally. You know, when I first heard about you, you know, you were a football star, a baseball star, uh, you know, a really high-end athlete. And mm. uh, I remember your football career. Uh, mm. You know, quite a, quite a uh, lot of accomplishments as a quarterback. You know, it's a team yeah. sport, you know, but yeah. everything runs off the quarterback's mindset and skill sets. What was it like playing quarterback at a high level? Ooh. Well, I was the best handoffer, I will say, you know, because we had a uh... – <laughs> no, no joke. But, uh, no, that was um, – because we did have uh, – we we, our average height and weight of our offensive line was 6'3", 300 pounds. We had two of the top five running backs in the state. Um, so we definitely were set up for, um, for a successful season to say the least, but, um, but no, I mean, um, I think, uh, being a part of that team and, uh, and going from actually center, I played center my entire life up until quarterback. Um, it was a privilege, but, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it was a, it was a unique experience because it was, uh, one of the first times where I really experienced like brotherhood and, um, really first experience like what it means to be a leader you know mm -hmm. like even though you know like we had so many um different assets on that team um to be the guy um that's calling the plays to be the guy that's you know you know really setting the tone for the game um you know that allowed me to like understand the factor of uh of of someone else putting trust in in me you know to take control of this um this team that a lot of uh a lot of people, a lot of alumni um, were looking to see as like, all right, one of the better teams in uh, New Jersey history. So um, to take on that task, it was a, uh, it was fun, man, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. Well, I remember, uh, you know, there's a lot of lineage in Absecon Island where we grew up and, 
you know, Thanksgiving morning, you know, it's Holy Spirit Atlantic High. It's been that way since like 1921. It's a rivalry mm -hmm. where just kids who are normally friends, you know, mm -hmm. for a couple hours, just get out and yeah. try to destroy each other. And yeah. everybody, you know, who's anybody is at that game. And yeah. I remember you being involved with some pretty big games. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, especially the Thanksgiving Day game, because that's always one, you know, you know, um, the late, uh, you know, Bill Walsh, you know, Coach Walsh, mm -hmm. you know, like he, uh, you know, he would be at the start of every season. He'd be like, all right, we're circling the calendar of Turkey Day, you know, right. and he actually had his whole thing where if we didn't, if we didn't beat Atlanta Kai, then he wouldn't eat any turkey that game. So not only was it a big deal for us, but it was a big deal for Coach Walsh's uh, appetite, to say the least, over at uh, Turkey Day. But, but yeah, man, I mean, uh, that particular year really set the tone for um, – for a lot of us, man, you know, like, and kind of got the ball rolling, uh, you know, for uh, a number of us players into uh, our next uh, ventures of life. So, but it's, and that's the brilliant, I think that's the brilliant thing too with, with team sports more than anything. And I think that was one of the ones, like I said, you know, like was really first able to, uh, you know, have people from different walks of life come together to achieve a, uh, a certain goal that we were all striving for. Right. You know, I love team sports. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's nice just you know you don't have to score the touchdown just make the pass you don't have to you know set up you know the the guy who runs 60 yards you make the block you know it just feels just as good yeah you absolutely know, when, I, when i think when i think about obviously your baseball career kind of went up up a few floors uh really masterful career you know playing at the major league level Ooh. just bravo my friend you know it's just like it's such a heart it's so competitive i mean yeah. you have all the tools you're six five two twenty five i mean you're, you're you know you're a masterful pitcher what was it like you know evolving your skill sets and going from step to step through that whole process um i will say like uh with baseball just apart from like football, you realize that obviously it's a team sport, but it's definitely one of the most individualized team sports out there, you know? And with saying that, it's like, that's where baseball, one thing that I, that has come to mind is the fact of like the mental part of the game. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, yes, I have, I had the stature, you know, like I had everything that like anybody would want in a, in a pitcher. Um, but really what it comes down to and how to excel from level to level is between the ears. Um, and that's, that's the biggest thing that I found, you know, like I had, um, I played four years within the Atlanta Braves organization, very grateful for that experience within the minor league system. And, um, um, and that was the one thing that I'd learned the most was like, what separated one guy to the next was their, uh, their mental discipline, you know, being able to not only be successful on day one, but also be successful on day 162 <laughs> with how many games you know obviously you need to be in peak performance shape and um and take care of the little things because it's always the attention to detail in just about any sport you play but especially with baseball because it's a game based off of failure too you mm -hmm. know and that's where it comes down to where i found with baseball was um number of life lessons to say the least because you know you you know the the old saying is like as a as a hitter you know, if you fail seven times out of 10 getting a hit, you're considered a Hall of Famer. <laughs> you know, so um, going from level to level, you know, like um, it definitely uh, it comes down between the ears, man. And, uh, you know, but I couldn't have been more grateful for that experience, to say the least, with the uh, with the Bravos. And on but, you know, the training that, that was going on back uh, in those days for, for baseball, you know, it was very regimented. The training was very linear. It was, you know, no pain, no gain. Yeah. Then early on, you had already been involved in some of the traditional Eastern arts and you were bringing some of the stuff that was kind of, it's, it's normal now, but back yeah. then, you know, it wasn't typical training. There wasn't a lot of recovery. There wasn't any uh, type of uh, therapeutic yoga. There wasn't any breath work control. Yeah. You know, what was it like when you're, when you're trying, you're trying, because you were always trying new things, you know, yeah. really, which is really the key to life is trying new mm -hmm. things, learning new things every day. What was it, what was it like trying to, you know, bring some of the, the mm -hmm. yoga stuff into like, you know, the bullpen or, you know. Oh the yeah. Field oh yeah. When I was, uh, I'll never forget my freshman year at St. Joe's University where I went to play right. baseball originally. 
I would be in the right field, you know, doing yoga. And, you know, that's when guys started calling me Sunshine, you know, like who was like a quarterback from, uh, remember the Titans, who was doing all the yoga, you know, tactics and all. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, most guys, you know, like, uh, you know, in baseball, at least in the beginning, you know, I don't know if it's a matter of like being afraid of change or different, you know, like, but I definitely kind of like danced to the beat of my own drum, to say the least. And um, when it came to the yoga, like, I think it, uh, I will say, um, going from St. Joe's onto the Braves, it really resonated with people. And that's where I found that um, within baseball, and I'm sure with other sports, but you start to gravitate or you start to attract people who tend to be like-minded. Um, right. Now, obviously, yeah, like it really, like yoga was always something that, you know, guys would do on their own. You know, it wasn't something that you were doing in the outfield by any means. Um, I didn't really care much to that, but, um, but it was, uh, it was something that, uh, that I found to be like um, important, especially when it comes to like the recovery, you know, like, and it, it kind of like blew my mind to the point where, not many guys were focusing and on their breath, you know, because like as a pitcher, you're constantly like, if you throw a game, if you throw in a game, you know, you're, yes, like you were saying, it's very regimented, like, like what you're doing the next day, the next five days until your next start. Um, and they, there comes a lot of running as well, a lot of running. And, um, and I remember, uh, one of my good buddies, uh, this kid I played with, um, Dave Moore, he, um, you know, he was one guy that uh, really um, was attracted to the nasal breathing, you know, because um, um, I would go and, and people would see me like, you know, breathing in and out my nose and everything and, and focus on the yoga and all. And they would start asking questions. And then, you know, after a couple of weeks of them like tagging along on certain runs and um, they're kind of like, wait a second, you know, this uh, this old sunshine uh, isn't all crazy as uh, as he seems to be. <laughs> Well, you know, there's there's such an emphasis today on recovery. You know, I think it's so important to unwind what we wind up. It just makes perfect sense in, in the world of physics. You know, back when I was a kid, you know, you know, after an athletic event, recovery was at Maloney's backyard. Uh, that's where the recovery took place. And, uh, you know, there wasn't much, you know, stretching other than hey, whether you were left in it. 12-ounce curls, uh, yes. 12-ounce curls, yes. That, that, yeah. was, that was a different time. Uh, yeah. where it was always go, 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 and all willpower, and we've become a lot more aware of how we can take care of ourselves. You know, when I first really think about really diving into to A.J. Holland, I remember you were a lifeguard at Washington mm -hmm. Avenue, which was the, the beach that my parents' house was on, on Martindale Avenue, and I'd come down on, on weekends. Or I, I don't know why I was there, but I just was, you know, because I saw your workout routine was like, what, what would classically be called like a functional workout. You know, yeah. you would be doing all sorts of different things with light weights, moving your body in all sorts of different angles against gravity, controlling your breath. And I'm like, oh man, this is great. Let me go, you know, hook up with AJ. I'm going to show him a couple things and see what he thinks about that. I'm going to show him some of the breathing and see what he thinks about that. And like, you were all game. Oh yeah. I think, um, well, what's it called? Like going into the cat. Well, cause that's where I was really introduced. I think it was at the age of 16 really, because that was, that was my first year, 14, 15, 16. Yeah. 16, 17, I'm sorry. 17 years old is when I actually, um, um, was introduced to not only the breathing, but kettlebells as well with Tommy sure. And, uh, and I think you had taught Tommy all of the nasal breathing, you know, like, so he kind of like touched upon with me a little bit and, and, um, and, what really uh, resonated with me was um, the honestly just being able to go harder, longer, you know, basically, you know, like if you try and keep it as common, you know, sense as possible um, after uh, the sessions with you and how you broke it down to me was to the point where, wait a second, you're telling me that I'm able to keep more oxygen in my system that would allow me to go further than myself uh, than the, other, you know, the day before or, right that this is something that's so unique. And like, again, at this point, you know, like I, like I said, I like, I like trying out new things, you know, and I thought that that was definitely something that kind of resonated with me, you know, and plus, I mean, Ed, I mean, you're so well respected within the lifeguard community, but obviously, you know, all throughout the, uh, the Seekin Island. And, um, you know, so it kind of was a no brainer, you know, so like, you know, and that, that's where the trust comes into play a little bit too. But, um, 
But uh, I go will ahead, say, go ahead. Yeah. Go, no, no, go ahead. Finish that. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I got a whole nother segue, but. Uh. <laughs> you know, if, if my memory, rec if I have recall of this, I think the first breakthrough that you really had with the breath in a, in a competitive thing was there was a two mile beach. Oh yeah. That's what I was about run. to get into. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, so I yeah. Like, he called me afterwards and goes, Ed, like, you're not going to freaking believe. <laughs> just, I just hey, dude, honestly, this is the most honest. And it's funny you're saying this because this morning in one of my sessions, we were going over like the nasal breathing within the plank like a two minute plank. And I was explaining to them after the, because one of the, one of the girls, one of my clients asked, uh, you know, what the point of with like breath retention. And I went into that, but they had asked like, like, Hey, what was the big breakthrough? And yeah. So veteran city beach patrol basically every year, um, we have to do a two mile restart run and I had gone into it and this is at the beginning of summer and my time was 1456. And, you know, nothing crazy, you know, over a seven you know, minute time or right around. So, um, and, uh, I spent that entire summer focusing on the breathing, doing kettlebells, but more than anything, just, you know, the nasal breathing. And the fact of the matter is too, is that that entire summer, I didn't run one time. There wasn't one time where I ran and on top of that, you know, okay. Yeah. So I go throughout the whole summer focusing on the breathing, the kettlebells and all, and, uh, I get back, I get to St. Joe's um for my first year freshman year you know you're really trying to set the standard you know like uh, okay like who's who's been working out all summer and um our coach says hey we have a, a two mile time that we have to uh everybody needs to run and um and i'm like kind of like jesus like i haven't ran once i'm gonna do terrible you know like kind of like thinking like jesus next thing you know we get on the track we get going i finished i crossed the finish line 12 46 so it was over two minutes, you know, like that I shaved off of a, a two mile time. And I'm like, that's no, like that's no blown smoke or anything like that. Like I, when I had to go back and, and I like talked to our, one of our managers, I was like, what do you, what do you mean? What, you said 1246. He's like, yeah. And that's when I was walking up the steps to go back to our, our field. And uh, yeah. And that's when I called you and I was like, wait a second, like, what the hell just happened <laughs> because on top of that too i felt as if like legitimately that i could have gone that exact same pace for another two miles so i think more than anything that was probably the biggest eye-opening experience that i had um because it it almost was like a super drug you know like it was like like limitless to another degree but like from the most natural form humanly possible and um um yeah, I mean that was uh that from that point on, that point on, that's when I truly became like a full on believer. And um and I like I said, I was telling that story this morning and um and it's uh and it still resonates with people and it's it's one of those things that um that it really blows my mind that not many not more people are locked in with it. Um but um but hey, that's what that's what it comes down to, people like yourself and myself. Um, about spreading the word with the nasal breathing, you know? I just think that uh, it's an incredible tool. And when it's applied correctly, you'll notice you actually get faster as the event unfolds or other people are hyperventilating and gasping for air and losing optimal patterns of movement in their body. You're actually, you know, you're getting faster and faster as the event unfolds. And we're so not used to that in competitive sports we're used to you know hanging on at the end here we're like man move the finish line down i'm just getting started <laughs> yeah it's funny um what's it called too um so we would go on some uh so we have a uh, a beach run every uh christmas eve morning myself my brother our buddy crazy todd and uh matt given my cousin who's in the uh, military and um there's been a couple times where um uh <laughs> Now those, I mean, you know, Mike and you know, my cousin and those two are two, um, you know, ultimate athletes to say the least. And, um, there's been a couple times, you know, where, um, when we're finishing up our run, where our run is about four mile long on the beach at four 30 in the morning, where, you know, there's the last 200 meter stretch where we just all just get into a full on sprint. And, uh, 
I don't know if I won the last one. I might have, but um, I know the previous two or three, I've I, like I just was able to take off into a full on sprint. But just to go back to your point, I mean, when you are nasal breathing and when you're able to keep more oxygen in your system and you're able to like extract that extra oxygen from the CO2 that you're blowing out using the nasal breathing, like you're literally doubling your intake of oxygen that allows you to go harder, longer for a longer period of time. You know, and the funny thing is, is like any run that I've ever been on, not only the circumstance of like the Christmas Eve run, but also, you know, obviously with the um, the breakthrough run. Um, but every workout that I've always been in, I always feel I feel stronger at the end. I feel stronger. I feel like I'm able to go harder. And again, it goes back to like that competitiveness a little bit, too, where, you know, if you tend to be competing with somebody and you hear somebody on like the run next to you, like gasping in and out of their mouth, it's like, all right, well. <laughs> you know, you're good, <laughs> you know, you're ready to rock and roll, you know, but um, I think that's the beauty of it too. And also on top of that too, is like, there's so many different um, rhythmic uh, techniques that you can use. And I remember too, is like when I first was like starting to run. And again, this was something that we were talking in the earlier session this morning was the fact that um, when I first started running without you know, kind of um, like much thought into it, but just to breathe in and out of your nose, you, you kind of, you, you tend to go with your most natural rhythmic beat, you know? And one thing that I remember, it was like two quick inhales, one, one quick exhale, two quick okay. inhales, one, one quick exhale. Okay. And you start to like create your own little, your own little mixture of breathing, which I think is to be so fascinating in itself. Um, <laughs> oh my God. I don't know. I just, uh, I think it's a beautiful thing that more people need to, um, just be aware of and be just open to, to trying and, you know, and focusing on for a longer period of time, because that's the other thing too. Everybody wants quick fixes, but this isn't something that's going to happen overnight either. You know, I mean, this is something like it's um, at our fingertips that you could practice on every single day. And to be honest, like one of my sessions, you know, a co group of guys, they're, they're always in the car. They're driving down to Avalon 35 minute commute. And I tell them and I'm like, listen, get in the car, turn the music off or on doesn't matter, but focus on your breathing. You know, think about going that, you know, four count breath, long inhale, you hold your breath at the top, slow drawn out exhale, hold it at the bottom. You know, whether you do it for a minute, two minutes, 10 minutes, uh, uh, an hour, you know, it's just like that, um, those little, um, those little incrementing like practicing, you know, practicing on a, on a, on a regular basis. But, <laughs> you know, we live in a world where everybody, you know, it is overstimulated. You know, we, we need to be stimulated. We need to be on our phone. We need to do this. We need to do that. People are pulling us eight different directions. I got to see who's on, you know, the next social media thing. <clears throat> and it's almost like the breath is just such a cure or just an opportunity to really pause before, you know, we get scattered again. Like, do you really want to focus at a level where you know you can be more successful than someone who doesn't have control of their breath. Can can you be in the moment without being stimulated in an artificial way? Can you just be stimulated by what your body's creating for you? And I think that, you know, what you're doing right now with Doc, Doc Fitness, and that, that's out of Ventnor? Ventnor, yeah, Ventnor Heights at the boathouse. And when you think about, like, the kettlebell and how that frees you up, to open up the body when you talk about how the breath and you blend that in with the kettlebell you can really bring yourself into that one-pointed focus so you can execute the movement flawlessly without any of the extra accoutrements you get from you know loud music at the gym or there's a tv on on the treadmill or you know whatever that might be oh yeah i'm honestly you know and it's funny too those you know i'm I can't stand like trying to pick what music everybody likes, you know, and, and people who are listening to this, who, uh, who come to the classes, they know that because I could listen to like, you know, Leon Bridges. I could listen to freaking like the softest, like sounds of the ocean and just, because that's kind of like when I was in Shusa, when I was started doing kettlebells, it was on the beach. You know, we didn't have music. We were just focusing on the ocean sound and, and the mm -hmm. breathing. And, and the thing is too, is like, with kettlebells, it's a ballistic movement that requires your attention to your breath. Mm -hmm. Like you have to the attention you, you have to you have to focus on your breath. The more you focus on just moving weight, mm -hmm. you're the more the more uh, ch the better chances you are of getting hurt. 
But like if you're able to combine that ballistic movement of a, a kettlebell swing with your breath, you're going to reap the benefits 10 times more than the person next to you who's just swinging just to get reps in. You know, mm -hmm. so the more the more you're able to sync that breath with movement, um, the safer it's going to be, the more effective your movement's going to be. And I think that's why I'm so attracted to the kettlebell is because how much in alignment the breath plays a role. You know what I mean? Like it's just, um, right. I mean, it, um, I don't know, it's a beautiful thing, but it's, um, but also it's, it's a means of safety as well. Right. Right. You know, when I grew up, it was, it was dumbbells and, uh, straight bars, you know, and there was maybe a cable machine here or there, you know, there wasn't any, there wasn't any kettlebells. And yeah. I, I remember watching early on youngsters with the kettlebells and i was i was just amazed at how it could build strength and flexibility all in the same moment oh yeah yeah i mean you take the the goblet squat for instance mm -hmm. i mean you you're holding a bell you know whatever how many kilos you're thinking but you're locked in a position at the top you know and when you go down to your bottom of your position like there's a lot of um like warm-ups that will do um where you'll get down into a sumo stance and you're using that kettlebell. You're prying that kettlebell with your handles and you're prying your knees apart with your elbows. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you'd see too many people doing that with dumbbells and barbells, you know, like, and <laughs> you know, like, and it's, uh, I think that's another thing that, that, um, that I find so uh, appealing to me with the kettlebell is that you're not only working strength, you're working cardio, you're working flexibility, mobility, um, your, your ability to incorporate breath into all these movements, um, is such a fascinating thing to me. Um, but it, um, yeah, it's something that is really like starting to catch on though, between like the breathing and, and also the kettlebells, which I'm starting to find too. And it's, and it's also with the kettlebell too, that a lot of people are attracted to is the minimalistic aspect of it. You know, you think you literally just have this ball of steel that, you know, could literally spit in your car, you travel across the country and you have your home gym, you know, in your back seat. Are you kidding right. me? <laughs> Here's what I like about the breath work. Yeah. Number one, we're going to engage this amazing muscle, this thoracic diaphragm muscle. Mm. And not only is it the primary muscle of inhale and how much incoming energy we can create to allow the ribs to become elastic and really work that lung tissue so you have more energy, but it's also the primary muscle for posture and stabilizing the spine and, and the low back. You know, when the low back is healthy and, and the spine is straight, you know, then we have this amazing digestion, elimination and assimilation of what's in the gut. So when you think about, you know, what's happening with the breathing that you're creating, because I noticed in the instructional videos that you have, on Instagram that your patterns of movement are never impaired. You mm. don't put in extra reps when your posture is poor. You have a relationship with this muscle, which is the number one muscle out of all 610 muscles. This is the one that runs them all. And we don't talk about it. But when you look at your movements and how your spine is never impaired, no matter what type of movement you're doing against gravity, I think that speaks volumes. Yeah, I think, um, you know, that's one thing, you know, technique, I mean, technique is everything, you know, and how do you get better technique? You know, especially in a kettlebell ballistic movement, you want to have that proper posture, you know, whether it be the top of a goblet squat, whether it be the top of your swing. Um, and I think that's, I mean, obviously something that I really try and lock in and focus on as much as humanly possible, um, because there are other, you know, like accounts out there that, um, you know, that, that they don't really focus on it as much, you know? And, um, and I think with the breathing, obviously that helps. So, you know, when we talk about, we were talking about baseball earlier and the level you were pitching, it's all about the fastball. <laughs> yeah, the command, yeah. And then, obviously, our body starts to break down from years of training. And at some point, the rubber begins to hit the road. And, you know, there's other opportunities in life. But I remember working with you where we were focusing on how, to, how could we get more velocity from the core of our body. 
and I was inviting you to hold the breath in at the release point rather than start the exhale earlier on in the stroke of pitching. I was trying to, to invite you to hold the breath in while the diaphragm is vertically down so you can engage more of your legs and hips before the recoil came up in your right arm. Do you remember that? Yeah, absolutely. That was um, that was in between one of my seasons uh, uh, going to Australia. Um, I was going into my second season in Australia. I remember I was home for the summer and, uh, and that's when we were really locking that in. And I felt like that was, that was a big indicator as into helping me getting back from shoulder surgery, because it was after that time where I was really trying to focus on bringing my velocity back up. And, um, yeah, it's, that's an interesting thing too, because it's like, um, with the breathing in, when it comes to pitching, um, most people just focus on you know, trying to calm your heart rate, you know, taking that deep inhale before the pitch. But what people didn't realize, and, and the funny thing is too, is like, it wasn't until, you know, you and I had that conversation. I remember it was right at headquarters, right on the, uh, right on the deck, you know, we were out there. I remember it. Yeah. And um, it's something that people don't, that they're not really aware that you, that you're able to do, you know? So by, um, because again, it, it goes back to focusing on your breath, to just calm yourself down and then you just action that's it you know but mm -hmm. if you're able to you know sync up the actual release of the ball with that little slight breath retention then it's um it'll work uh it'll work wonders for you <laughs> you know i i notice your lower body mechanics have always been super efficient and then i watch you with the kettlebell stuff that you're doing on the instagram account your your lower body mechanics and patterns of movement are are just about perfected. I don't think it could be done any better. Oh, uh, no. I mean, they can always be better. <laughs> but I we don't, want, we don't want them to get any worse. But you know, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, everything starts, you know, from the soles of the feet to the hips. Oh, my God. Know? No. And I think uh, you know, that's, I mean, that's another thing, too, where, I mean, just being barefoot, too, you know, like constantly, like, um, and I think how important, you know, the breath is, you know, it's about grounding yourself in the present moment. How do you ground yourself in the present moment? Was it pair, through a pair of shoes, you know, while you're working out? Not so much. No, you know, it's about that grounding of putting your feet onto the ground. But um, but no, when it comes to, um, you know, focusing on the legs and focusing on uh, on building strength in the legs, um, that what I find is important or it's a it's a good association is with um, that quick um, mm -hmm. that quick exhale. OK, at the yeah. um, say again, like top of your squat or top of a kettlebell swing because the kettlebell swing in itself, um, how I'm teaching my clients who come in. Um, and one thing that we're focusing on is as on the descent of the bell, you're taking two quick inhales. Mm -hmm. So it's two quick inhales. And then at the top of the swing, it's <sighs> brace at the top of your swing. And within that brace, it's a matter of not just blowing out your air, Right. I mean, it's it's about contracting everything, you know, contracting your core, contracting your glutes, contracting your quads. And I think mm -hmm. that's something that really goes to show because, yes, we do a lot of legs. We do a lot of full body movements and and so on and so forth. But um, the tension that you're able to build within a particular movement, you know, helps to increase the chances of having stronger legs. You know, and it's about maximizing your time too, you know, so it's right. I mean, it's, um, if you're able to do, you know, say, spend 10 minutes doing kettlebell swings, you know, 10 swings, every swing, you know, every 10, every 10 swings, every uh, minute on the minute, and you're focusing on movement with breath, but not only with breath, right. Mm -hmm. It's more so with that quick exhale, um, and like that little slight fire that you're able to build within your system. So I kind of just went off on a tangent there, but <laughs> it was perfect because it's really about efficiency. Whether you're 18 or you're 58, you know, whatever your age may be, you need to be efficient when you're dealing with the body. Cause once the body, you know, begins to deteriorate, it's really difficult to bring it back to the, you know, the way God made it. So, you know, trying to sidestep a lot of the injuries and, you know, wear and tear uh, from excessive movements that we see, you know, in traditional fitness and, and sports is, you know, what we're all about. We're all about efficiency 
We're all about paying attention and we're all about learning how to raise our awareness about our skill sets. When you think about that, that patterns of movement in your lower body, you know, the arch of the foot acts like a diaphragm between the heel plate and the ball joint. You have another diaphragm at the pelvic floor behind the reproductive organ and in front of the buttock. That, there's another diaphragm there, these horizontal muscles. We have a diaphragm here. We have another diaphragm in the throat. And these horizontal muscles are activated by this breathing that helps all the vertical muscles, the spindles, the ropes, work so much more efficiently in having a strong container of energy that we allow to dissipate based on our intention. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, and I think that's something that, um, you know, people don't necessarily know, you know, and I think that's something that, you know, the more we lock in with that focus and efficiency to the breath, I mean, the better off you're going to be, right? I mean, it's... Well, it's funny. As soon as you focus on your breath, the higher part of your brain turns on. You're more alert. You're more aware. You are you know your surroundings. Also, yeah. when you, your breath becomes labored, the first thing you notice is your patterns of movement aren't as efficient. Yeah. And you yeah. want to be efficient. Yeah. And speaking of, um, you know, being aware of your surroundings, you know, and how important that breath is, um... Like earlier today, for instance, I mean, what is it? November 10th. Um, the ocean is, um, I think I checked it, it was 54, you know, which is not obviously the warmest. You know, I'm sure you're, you got some cold lakes out there, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> out west. <laughs> I saw one of your videos with uh, Wendy uh, was videoing you um, walking out. I think it was what, 34 degrees or 30 something along oh, those wow. lines. Yeah, that was over in Colorado at uh, Officer's Gulch, man. It's right off of I-70 between Vail and Copper Mountain. Yes. You gotta stop, if you're ever driving by there, man, pull over and hit Officer's Gulch, man. Even though, <laughs> it's like freaking 40 degrees in there, man. <laughs> you know, you're talking about it was snowing. Yes, yes, yes. And, man, it was so cold. Yes. But, but when you have the breathing – the nasal breathing and the different techniques that we've mastered over the years, it doesn't affect you as uh, not at all. And that's, that's to my point today. Like, so I went in and uh, I spent about, you know, eight to 10 minutes in the water today, just walking out and um, started out with a little bit of fire breathing. And I always, I always going to have it. I like covering, I like covering my mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, I think psychologically, I just think that I'm warmer, you know, just by going quick inhales, you know, like by covering them. Yeah. Um, but going through that sequence, it's just a matter of, um, you know, it allows you to create warmth within your body. I mean, you know, so basically I walked out and this is something that I like to do. You know, I try to do at least once a week, you know, like now that we're getting into the winter months, you know, at least once a week, you know, whereas before, obviously, you know, summertime, you're feeling good in 75 degree water <laughs> a couple times a week. But, but uh, once you're in there, it's funny how much um, fun you can have or it's, it's, you know, how much play you can have with the breath and see what works, but kind of going off of like the, the, the different techniques that we've mastered is the fact of um, going the not interostic nasal breathing, but not only with that, you know, mm -hmm. adding, adding different um, uh, valves to it. So right. one thing right. today I was going through was closing one nostril and mm -hmm. going 10 quick inhales, like, holding that in at the top going for i mean in my mind i was trying to get a 10 count but i was only probably able to get a five count you know mm -hmm. and then close the other nostril and then 10 quick exhales bah, 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 and then hold your breath at the bottom you know and then the same thing go through that sequence and then you go down mm, excuse me um eight quick inhales eight mm -hmm. you know oh what a great ladder so, Oh, uh, dude, uh, the ladders, game changers, you know, and I think, um, but aside from that, though, like, I mean, or going along with that is, um, like, after, what, maybe a minute, two minutes, you know, you know, I'm body surfing, you know, in 50, 50, 50 degree water, you know, and it's just, it's amazing, like, it's, it's circumstances like that, that, like, really, like, is refreshing, um, mm -hmm to realize that 
you, you have so much power, you know, like you have so much power. Like now, granted, we're very great. We're very, you know, it's um, we're very fortunate to be able to live by the ocean, you know, and be able to have that access to a cold water tub whenever you want. Um, but um, by putting yourself in certain like finding comfort and discomfort, you know, because nobody likes cold water. Let's be honest. <laughs> I doubt that Wim Hof even likes cold water, you know, like it's just a matter of your, your awareness factor of, but going back to this initial thought of being aware of your surroundings and how do you become aware of your surroundings? It's like, especially in like uncomfortable situations, it's a matter of focusing on your breath. And, and, and that's one thing too, that, you know, just to kind of um, segue a little bit into like our, our workouts, our training sessions are, I know I'm talking a lot right now, so I'm like, uh, <laughs> I got to get a couple of breaths in. But, um, but we have an assault bike in there, and that mm -hmm. thing gets your heart jacked up, mm -hmm. jacked up, you know, like especially when you get off. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing that I try to reiterate to, you know, my clients that come in is um, how important it is to not just, you know, just fall on the ground and start huffing and puffing out of your mouth. But to give yourself the opportunity um, to lock in on that breath, you know, mm -hmm. afterwards. So because in my mindset, too, is like your heart rate's jacked up. So it's beaten through the roof. So how do we take control of that? Mm -hmm. We take control of that by mimicking our breath with our heart rate. Bump, 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 bump. So then, then, then you start taking control. It's almost a matter of you're taking grasp of that heart rate with your breath. And you're starting to elongate it. So basically, like you do that. Yeah. And then and then and then after, I mean, it's like a miracle drug, dude. Like it just <laughs> it's like yeah. day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out. Like I'm constantly um, reminded about the beauties of this, you know, and I find I find it too. Like, obviously, yes, like within fitness it plays a huge role um, within competitive sports, you know, within recovery time, obviously, yes. But more than anything is the fact that it helps you release, relieve stress. It helps you live a happier life. I mean, it's like in times of difficulty, you know, like how many times are like decisions made or things said like based off emotions and it's like, if you're able to take that second, take that three seconds and five, 10 seconds of just, just mm -hmm. bringing your breath, like focus on a couple of breaths. Like, would you really call so-and-so what, you know, would you really like, you know, make, um, a very neurotic decision. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, um, it's something that is that, that I, that I, I could speak to on for hours, like, to be honest, because I find it to be so important to just everyday life. Um, and it's kind of funny too, because it's like, what are you talking about? Like somebody who has no idea like about the breathing and no, about, no idea about the nasal breathing or anything like that. They just think, Oh, what do you mean? Just focus on your breath. It's like, no, like there's more to it than that. It's a matter of, um, honestly living a positive, like more positive, you know, um, life. I mean, it's, 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 you know, life with breath, I guess. <laughs> Negativity doesn't exist. We create it and then it becomes a subconscious imprint and then that just becomes us. It's not real. You're not born negative. Oh, no. You know, when you think about, when I think, not, take a step back, you know, from your career and I, I see you now in this second, that your, your, this fitness career where you've chosen uh, breath control and uh, dumbbells, I mean, excuse me, kettlebells. It really, when I think about being a pitcher, and how, you know, that explosion of tension into relaxation and the patterns of movement it takes to be a quarterback, the patterns of movement it takes to be a, a baseball pitcher and hitter. Now it seems like the kettlebell and the breath control was the, it's perfect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, the same thing. it's funny, man. It's funny how things like kind of like, uh, Things have, I mean, so far, man, like it's, it's, um, it's kind of like a culmination of everything that you're, you're talking about, you know, and it's, um, um, and I, it's funny too. It's like, like, I'll be honest, like with COVID, COVID, like shutting everything down was, 
not for nothing was a bit of a blessing in disguise for me. You know, like I, um, I was working three different spots, 80 hours a week. And, um, you know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't fulfilled to say the least. Right. And then, um, COVID had shut everything down. And then actually we were at my buddy's place who place we're at right now. And, um, he's got a nice little backyard and, uh, I bought a kettlebell and, um, started holding workouts just well actually just started running workouts and and more people started showing up surprisingly enough and uh yeah and then it's kind of like slowly kind of like organically turned into its own thing and i find it i kind of find like that's kind of like how like i think people i don't know i think if you're uh if you're able to be aware of just like the um the kind of go with the flow mentality you know, like you ride the wave, <laughs> you know, and, um, and I think that's kind of like the last, how the last like couple of years has gone, you know, like where I'm just kind of going to flow, riding the wave, you know, making the tough decision when need be, but also, um, um, focusing on, um, you know, the things that, uh, fulfill me and the things that tend to be the most fulfilling to me, um, is, you know, the breath control. Yes. The fitness. Yes. But more so than anything is like, you know, I have something that I felt like I learned from Doc, like or from the stories that I was told about Doc Your is grandpa. the fact that, um, you know, the most valuable currency there is, is the effect that we have on others, you know, mm-hmm. and you're a testament to that. Uh, Doc is a testament to that, you know, and that is something that um, I find to be important for anybody regardless whether you're in fitness or training or coaching or anything, but it really is about that um, building your own legacy. And I find for me, um, that's, that's kind of like a legacy that I would like to, uh, that I would like to hold is like, you know, a, you know, create positive change um, mm-hmm. um, within people's lives and trying my best, you know, to make them better versions of themselves. And where does that go? You know, like, um, so anyway, I mean, I think that's just a matter of, um, the, the road that has been bestowed upon me. <laughs> you know, life is all about service, service to others, service to yourself through others. You know, you try to leave things a little better than when you first engage them, uh, you know, making it easier for others, planting seeds, you know, so it's easier for the next generation than when it was for us. You know, speaking of that. Before we transition, I've got a note here. I got a this 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 is the part where we where we uh, we have questions for the guest. Mm. Now, I, I need where is this in my notes? Oh, this is it right here. Now, here's today's hundred million dollar question. Oh boy, who said this? Oh jeez, fulfilled and satisfied. Never be satisfied, but always be fulfilled. Who said that? Doc Holland, 100%. Your, your dad said that. Oh, Big Ward. Where do you think he heard it from? <laughs> Birds of a flat feather flock together. <laughs> and, you know, that, really, that really touched me. Yeah. You know, I think that is such a, a, a simple statement that is that's such a deep rabbit hole sometimes for us, you know, life can get pretty complex pretty quickly. You know, when you have the breath and you've got a healthy mindset, you can simplify anything if you want to, if you, if you want to, yeah. if not, you, but fulfilled, but never satisfied. I mean, what, are, what cause I've kind of brought, been brought up in the mentality, like no matter what I do or what I've been gifted to do, there's a part of me that, that says I can always do it better tomorrow. Of course. And, yeah. you know, and, and I get that, but I don't really give myself an attaboy for maybe the success I had today. So having that balance between fulfilled and satisfied and know that tomorrow is going to be another opportunity to get back out there and try to make the world a better place. And I just thought big Ward hit that really well. Yeah. I think, um, I think, geez, I mean, that's, that's something that, um, that holds true. I, you know, between all the Hollands, <laughs> especially Big Mike, who I know is listening to that. And, uh, you know, he probably was shouting into the camera, oh, that's Big Ward saying right there, because, geez, that's going to be, uh, 
you know, that's something that I think that's no, I think that really is something to there's something to be said about that. You know, and um, and I think it is tough to find a kind of hard. You know, it's it's difficult to find balance in that sometimes, right? right. Um, and yeah, um, it's yeah. difficult. It's difficult. Yeah. You know, boundaries are key. You know, what are our boundaries? Yeah. The great part about breath control is it shows you your boundaries <laughs> clearly, <laughs> and, and knowing that that's a temporary line, it's just a mark in time. Mm -hmm. and these yeah. Can expand. Or they can contract based on your level of interest, based on your level of dedication, based on your level of awareness, etc. Yeah, and I think it goes that direction too. Interest, direct, or interest, interest, dedication, and what was the last one you just said? Awareness. Awareness. Yeah, interest, and and honestly, that turns into a circle, really, because you know, if you become aware of it, okay, then you're obviously going to get interest in it, and then you're going to become dedicated to it. If you're dedicated to it. You're going to become more aware of it, which is going to make you more interested. If you're interested in it, then you're obviously going to be dedicated to it. So that's like a that's a you know that's a life circle in itself when it comes to learning really just about anything, especially with the breath. So beautiful, man. You know how do folks uh, get a hold of you? How can they get your classes? You know how, what how, what's the next step here? Oh man. Um, so right now, the best way to contact me would be through the Instagram. It's Docs Fitness underscore nj um and the next step for me right now I'm, I'm actually training for a um a strong first certification um that's taking place in new york in the first uh, week of uh december mm -hmm. so i've been kind of grinding that out you know um just for like a goal purpose you know for the you know obviously it's nice to you know have a uh, sfg certification but more than anything it just put me on a path for um for to be training so the process of getting there um so that's the next step um i'm working it all out man i mean it's uh you know i've been working on a website getting things all squared away there and then um Good. i'm going to be creating some online programs to sell to the masses and um it'll be or you know just be for the masses i mean um because right now if you know if anybody's familiar with uh, my page i just i like it to be a destination where um people are able to get um, challenging but effective workouts um, that not only incorporate kettlebells, but also animalistic movements, body weight movements um, that really um, push you to the limits um, and make you feeling good. <laughs> well, let me know that everybody here at Ed Harold and Go Be Great, how we can support you uh, because, you know, you're really, you know, a special, special person. And, you know, we want people to get your brand. Yeah, no, I appreciate that, Ed. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, just hop on the Instagram. And if anybody ever, you know, cares to reach out to me, um, you can also reach me. I'll send you my, I have an, I have an email, uh, docsfitnessnj uh, at gmail.com. Um, if anybody reaches out with any questions and, um, and honestly, um, yeah, man, I mean, more power to you, Ed. I mean, like uh, for you to create this kind of platform to allow people to speak on a uh, you know, one of the um, one of the most underrated, but also one of the most important, you know, facets of of training and um, and health, health and wellness. You know, with the breath. So, you know, I think we all, you know, feel pretty like we're in a corral, you know, like cattle. And you know, the great part about the breath for me is, as soon as I began to discover, you know, what it was bringing to my workouts, what it's bringing to my mind, bringing to my mindset. You know, I, I knew I was off on an adventure that there was going to be no corrals. I mean, the rat, like, look what you just did in the ocean today. You're doing 10, 10 little inhales, 10 little exhales, holding in for 10, holding out. It, it, you, it, every day is like art class with this. <laughs> canvas, and it just affects your nervous system in so many different ways. But at the end of the day, you just feel, you feel. You feel, and the yeah. the key to life is really healthy feelings. How do you feel about yourself? How yeah. do you feel about your relationships? If you can take care of that, the thinking world is easy to navigate. One hundred percent, and it's um, and it's the most natural form. I mean, not to you know, like I mean, you think about it. I mean, I think there was it was it was yourself who kind of like made a point to it too, where um, you know, you look at little kids running on the beach. You know, anybody has nieces or nephews or sons or daughters. You know. When they're running around on the beach, are they breathing, huffing and puffing in and out of their mouth? No, 
Of course not. <laughs> They're breathing in and out of their nose. So you got to think of it too. It's like, why not bring ourselves back to the most natural form of how we were created to begin with? Exactly. If you want right? to move I mean, in your life, the first step is backwards. Hit yes. Break, pull the weeds, put in the new flowers, and get going in that garden. I love it. Now, today's a special day. I believe someone has a birthday in your family. The two birthdays. Never, two birthdays? Well, you gotta you gotta remember now. You gotta remember. Obviously, you got Big Mike's birthday, but you got the Marine Corps birthday for Big Ward. Now, the Marine Corps, the only military institution that has a birthday. <laughs> and for those of you out there who haven't met Ward Holland, you haven't lived <laughs> in your life until you spend the day at the beach with Ward and you get his awareness because he knows a little bit, a lot of bit about everything. <laughs> and then we got Dynamite Mike, who's a world-class endurance athlete and another beautiful, beautiful soul young man. We want to send ha those happy birthdays out because the earth fell, fell off its kilter. <laughs> Whatever that three decades ago, I would see like 35 now. 35, big three, five, man. 35, I just pulled that out of my ear. Unreal. Yeah, but he's got the mindset of a 20-year-old, man. He's locked in. He's always been locked in. You know, you and Mike and, and AJ, you two guys are two of the finest people I've ever met in my life. I've been a few places in my life, and I've always enjoyed the company with you guys. You are a positive force for good, and that and that's beyond everything else you're doing to try to help others. So thanks for being you. And I appreciate you being with us today. I wish you well on your world travels if you end up in Czechoslovakia or anywhere. <laughs> so, it's a possibility. And uh, you, dude, you're really living living a life to be proud of, and I, I, I makes me really proud to be your friend. No, I mean, hey, man, I consider you family, Ed, and honestly, um, I. Uh, a lot of the stuff, like you look at that Instagram page or you look at like the people, like I look at like the positive feedback and that I get. And I just think about the positive feedback or the positive people that played a huge role in my life. And, um, you know, you are at the forefront, Ed, and that's no, you know, like that's just this the cold hard truth. And it's, um, it's something that to be completely frank with you, like I wouldn't be in the situation that I'm in right now if it wasn't for you, you know, and that's dead serious. And I, you know, and I think that's something important for people to understand is the fact that, you know, um, you're putting on such a great platform for, you know, amazing. I appreciate you, brother. I look forward to catching up with you soon. If you want to come out skiing or snowboarding at Snowbird, you can come out and stay with us. You're, Wendy and I and Harley would love to host you guys. And until we meet again, brother. Thanks. Love for you, man. Life with breath. I love you, man. All right. Good stuff, man. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Turkey Day. Yeah, man.